representing the Arab Spring for Syria, Dr. Shafiq Boudron. Uh, Dr. Shafiq has been uh, a staple of our uh, interfaith events and our and our and our action and our community service, and along with his sons. And I had the opportunity to meet his uh, his elder son today. Um, but he's always bringing his family out to these events, and he's always been an, an active pillar in our in our community. So, without further ado, Dr. Shafiq Boudron. Thank you so much. I'm very humbled by your very generous and undeserving words, but thank you so much. Uh, this means a lot to me, to my family, and to a lot of our friends. I'm also humbled to stand here <coughs> and talk about the Arab Spring for Syria because um, what's happening in Syria is um, of very, very heavy weight. We remember what happened in Newtown, Connecticut, and the tragedy is very big. Yet similar things happen everywhere, including Syria, where dozens and hundreds of people die every day, and dozens of children similar to those that we lost in Connecticut. I ask you to bow for a brief moment to honor them, remember them, and pray for them, and pray for the people of Syria as well. Thank you. <clears throat> what I'm doing today is just give some personal reflections on the Arab Spring for Syria. It's a revolution that arose out of an organic uprising, stemming from the need of the Syrian people to break away from the military rule of their government and live in a free and democratic country with dignity and equality. It was an innocent, legitimate, and spontaneous revolution that initially expressed the modest demands for reform for which the Assad regime responded with a bloody iron fist. <coughs> that led to events to escalate and spiraled into an all-out conflict. The Assad dictatorship <clears throat> regime was able to oppress the people only with the implicit and explicit aid, support, and approval of both regional and world powers. Both so-called friends and foes of Syria found themselves sitting on quicksand with revolutions and public unrest engulfing the entire region and beyond. It became evident that the world is not what it used to be. The people were no longer isolated, the people throughout the world were no longer isolated from one another and can no longer be dictated to by regimes, no matter who, where, and why. The people of the region and that of the world have become intertwined seamlessly and instantly with words and images expressing grievances and capturing new visions shared in real time between each other. Left unchanged are the instruments of evil that dictated and oppressed the people of the region, which were still at bay, finding themselves in a blinding sandstorm facing unsettled and uncharted waters. These special interest powers, which have both shared and conflicting goals, played and continue to play direct roles on the Syrian stage. Their actions carry the dual aim of helping the Syrian people and or the regime, yet at the same time serving their individual interests, which is clearly <coughs> the highest priority above all else, including helping the Syrian people. In closing, I would say what began as an innocent, justified, and inspiring revolution by the Syrian people one that is admired, supported, and embraced by so many freedom and equal, justice-loving people, 
became a stage for such regional and world powers to play out their, to play out and settle their differences and conflicts and advance the ambitions that they have. Extended into and through Syria, we pray that the Arab Spring for Syria blooms into a beautiful future for the Syrian people, the region, and the world in the near and long sustainable future. Thank you.